Hey guys, Osha Sean here again. I am here to do a cartoon picture of Little Fizz from B2K. Man, we were so obsessed with B2K growing up. Very obsessed. And uh, trying to get everything. Probably should do this at first. Get all this situated. Set this right here. Excuse my hand. Excuse the camera shaky. Should have did this at first, but yeah. So play an audio book while I do so. Let's see. I don't even know what to listen to. Um, I'm quite sleepy too, but I said I wanted to go and get this out of the way before I go to bed. Um, yeah. Let's see. Because I can't say I really know exactly what. The invasion of the body snatchers. Let's see. I can't remember what I was listening to at first. Uh, I think I know what I was listening to. Uh, Dracula. Uh, if you have two rats or any type of autoimmune system problem like I do, and your hand shakes uncontrollably like mine does at times, don't worry about trying to make everything straight because you can always do it over again or you just leave it like it just wants to come out straight, you know. So yeah, let's get started. Just 
I ain't gonna do the eyebrows just yet. Do the eyebrows later. Let's uh, get little face um, color in. So little face, I'm gonna use these three colors. I'm going to use the white, then I'm going to use the yellow, then I'm going to use the gold. All three of these are, uh, what's the name of this? Uh, dog it. I'm looking right at it on this pencil, the name. Premium color. Premium color, okay. So uh, get the white. Let's use the white. And I want you guys to always remember to be careful with premium colors because premium colors will stain the picture. It will stain. It took me a couple of months to get used to the premium color. I was more of a crown crazy art person or a crown person crown pencil person you know but um, now I actually not quite used to it now so yeah now the yellow Yes, she knew he craved. He'd do anything for them. He'd probably turn the nightmare off like a faucet. With a power 
saw him twirling over her shoulder as she went through the town to the market square. And all along the canals, they said that Lucy Harder was looking better at last. They knew she would come to her senses by and by. She crossed the market and turned into the little courtyard of Rainfield and Company. But in a moment, she found that the door was locked. The dust in his own inside told her the office probably hadn't been opened since Jonathan left. As if the business Jonathan had in his pouch were all the business the company had. But Lucy was undaunted. She made her way through narrow streets to the oldest quarter of the town. When she came to Renfield's gate, she saw she was in luck. He was darting around in the side yard, wonderful in hand. She could do it all in the garden, she thought. She didn't need to steal herself to the musty reaches of his house. She called his name as prettily as she could. Hello, but held his finger up to tell her to wait. He was on the trail of a red-winged beauty, and just this moment had lighted on a yellow tumor. He stalked it, stealthy as a panther, and in the air. Now get this gold. Go over with the gold. Okay, so now all I can do is I'm gonna do some shady. I'm gonna get my uh, toasted toffee and do some shading with it. So, this is the crazy art toasted toffee. Do some shade. Travelers. Not like 
blindly, the other answered, draining his port and calling for another. I told you, nobody travels this far back in the Carpathians. These are the poor folk whom God has doomed to live at the end of the world. I don't know what they do. A little farming, though I can't imagine what grows here. Mostly, they get in a lot of accidents, and they kill each other for sport. I see, said Jonathan, holding out his mug while the innkeeper's wife poured from a stone jug. A few more peasants straggled in and found their tables. They seemed accustomed to take their supper here, as if it were the only bright spot in their day. God forsaken, they served my word. They limped and crouched, and one had an empty socket where an eye was couched. A poor thin woman appeared to have the palsy. Various of them coughed as if they would expire before the food reached the table. Jonathan thanked his stars that his life was better. When his horse went lame the day before, stumbling in the fog on the bumpy road, he thought he'd be lost for weeks before he came out on foot. But just as he made ready to leave his horse and all his goods to seek help, the mail coach happened by. The coachman agreed to take in payment the brass bowl and the gypsy rug to carry him to this lonely spot. As near as Jonathan could tell from the map, the place where the main trail through the mountains forked with the road to the castle of the Count. The coachman was too tired to eat, and he swore besides that the inn served swill, so he brought a whole jug of port for himself and repaired to a room upstairs. Now look at the white. The gold with the white. Bacon and potatoes and strong mountain wine were brought in great bowls for the peasant's table, but the innkeeper laid a cloth for Jonathan, setting it out with a knife and napkin and a jar of wild flowers. Jonathan sat and waited, staring at his plate, the noise of the poor folk eating coming to his ear with the sound of a barnyard. The innkeeper laid down a plate of steaming food, a kind of meat and potato pie, and spooned out a portion. Jonathan shuddered at the sour and smell, but he had to eat as the innkeeper stood by expectantly. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to go and and do his lips. I'm going to take care of his lips. Peach. This is the Premier Cup Peach. And now go use the pink. That was the peach before. And now use the pink. Get the crazy art. Toast the toffee. Just go with just a little. Not a lot. This is the crazy art brown, just a regular brown. And well, now I'm feeling his eyes and his eyebrows. He had a little mustache going around here. A little mustache. Um, right there. Get the premier color black. I saw. I ran and ran and somehow made my way back here. 
young man, he cried. Why can't you understand? We are the ones who escaped. And he let the silence tell the story of all of those who hadn't. But Jonathan thought they must be having a joke at his expense. He had come too far and braved too many solitary nights on the trail and emerged unscathed to fall just short of his goal for fear of ghosts. Shit. It was a matter of pride. Lose say circulation in my leg. Getting pretty sleepy, I'm not gonna lie. Getting pretty, pretty sleepy. I'm gonna for a glass of wine. Because I am a gentleman, I will toast the health of Dracula, the ruler of these regions. I wonder who will drink with me. And with that, he stormed away from the fireside and took the steps to his room two at a time. He shut the door and stood against it and breathed a sigh. Couldn't help but feel a little cheated, naturally. He rather hoped for an idyllic mountain village nestled outside the castle walls. He pictured country folk who lived in harmony with nature on the one hand, the lord of the manor on the other, passing their days in wholesome work and loving comradeship. These warped and broken-hearted people at the end could only make him sympathize with the isolated nobleman who wished to move to Bismarck. He would tell them so now tomorrow. Now I'm get the... Before I move any further. After dark. I'm gonna get the... Crazy all white and smooth everything out with it. The room was simply furnished and oddly crooked, as if the building had started to sink. The bed was atop a dais, as was the custom of Transylvania, and the legs were so high that a man could not climb into it without the aid of a stool. Otherwise, there was a simple desk and chair, a dresser with a bowl and pitcher, and a boot jack on the floor. Under the bed, a chamber pot. Jonathan hadn't been in a room in more than three weeks, and he felt a creeping sense of unease at being ordered about by furniture again. On his journey, he had slept wherever he fell at the end of the day. He washed when his face was hot and sweaty, relieved himself against the nearest tree. He resisted the comfort of the in his ear. If it didn't mean his passing down among the peasants yet again, he'd go outside with his woolen cape and sleep in the open. A knock on the door. It was one of them come to apologize, no doubt, for trying to scare him like a child. But it was only the innkeeper's wife who begged him to let her turn down the bed. He shrugged and sat on the dean chair to take off his boots. She watched him carefully all the while she worked, fluffing the pillows and pulling out the tiger down from the chest at the foot of the bed. As he struggled to pull that second bed, she took a book from her go to cross the, and laid it down among the, the black part just yet. Because, um, no need everything we spooled it out. So I got that part down. Um, I think before, yeah, I'm going to do his hair. It's black. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a roaring 
sound like a whirlwind began to swell in the room. Jonathan looked to the window, but though it was open, the curtains hung still, and the night outside was motionless under the gloom of clouds. The gust of wind blew the newspapers off the table and rippled across the iron note. It ruffled his hair like an angry hand. It blew against him so that he had to shut his eyes against the force. And then it snuck the candle out, and the room was still. In his confusion, Jonathan had the irrational urge to shut the window, still telling himself the storm had come from without. He climbed down out of the bed and went and parted the curtains. As he reached for the latch of the open casement, a somber gibbous moon broke its way out of the clouds. He looked up at it now as if he'd never seen it before. It was a planet newborn in the mountains tonight. And then the howling began in the crags around the valley. Horrible, drawn out, plaintive, wrong. All through the darkened end, Jonathan could get the crazy hot light. Okay, so I got that part done. Now I'm going to work on his clothes. Work on his clothes. So, um, he had a chain on this picture, but I just didn't put the chain down. But if you want to, you can put the chain around here, around his, between like his shirt and his collar. So, get the premiere color. Black again. So now, um, this part right here must be gray. Gray. I'm using the crazy art. It's this warm gray. It has snow when I'm at.
I'm not gonna feel this in because he had a white earring on. Well, no, it was a white. On that nose, it was bright. That's something I do know, bright. But uh, this is my version cartoon of Little Fizz from B2K. Now he's on Love and Hip Hop. This one show Love and Hip Hop. Hollywood. So whoever watched this video, um, what a joy. Thank you. 